The purpose of the design of the conduit crawler was for pre-installation of fiber optics. Fiber optics is important because it is by far the most efficient form of communication within electronic devices. It reduces the repair rate by 60% and is three times more efficient in power ratings than typical coaxial cable. The picture to our right shows a modern today version of conduit inspection where they are fishing a device down a conduit pipe in order to see if there's any blockages. This device has a bunch of motors on it, high definition cameras, lights, everything they can use in order to actually be able to see inside the pipe. Um, these devices, however, range anywhere from prices between $11,000 and $35,000, which is way too expensive for industry standards, which is why most of them typically don't use them, and go and do a more non-efficient way, like yelling into the pipe to see if there's an echo or if it makes it all the way through the pipe, or using a vacuum to blow air into the pipe to see if there's any pressure that builds back to see if there's a clog, which is not very efficient and can cause a lot of issues my senior design partner, Clayton, who works at the Water District, has firsthand seen when a project that should have cost no more than a couple thousand dollars ended up costing over a hundred thousand dollars because of a misread or a mistake. Our first module is the LiDAR. The picture to the right shows a 2D scan of it, the RP LiDAR A2M8360. What it does is it rotates in 360 and takes a one-dimensional scan using the later laser feedback to see how far an object is. Uh, it is anywhere in a 12 meter range with a two inch diameter limit. Um, its scanning frequency is about 10 Hertz and we will actually be using this as our tracking as well as for our 3D imaging. How it's done with our 3D imaging is based upon the second module, our servo motor, which has feedback pins, PWM feedback. We use the servo motor to oscillate up and down this two-dimensional LiDAR and get multiple different layers of planes in the 2D scan in order to see an image. In order to actually be able to have them modulate and work together, we use our third module, which is our L bracket. We actually made three versions, two of them which were 3D printed and one that we used as aluminum. We have to the left all the dimensions of our L bracket, and then to the right a solid image of what it would look like on the device. There is, with the L bracket, we would have to connect it to our chassis. How that is done is by, as you can see here, our chassis has a setup for at the bottom where the two prongs are is for this picture to your right where that would actually just sit inside and then uh, on the far right of the photo those would actually fall inside and then the L bracket connects to the four holes on the top of it. As you can see on our chassis we actually have four uh, setups for both the four motors and then four prongs for our PCB the motors are actually oval shaped so that way we would be able to extend our motors if we actually wanted to for further distance uh, pipes for their diameter. Our fifth module is our PCB. Our PCB is set up for uh, as a typical Arduino setup. Um, we take everything that you would need with uh, RXTX communication for serial communication uh, that is done using our USART communication. We have a 12 volt uh, double barrel jack that would read in 12 volts. That goes to a 5 volt regulator that actually down steps 12 volts so we don't burn out our Atmega 3218P, which is our brain of our device. It's the microcontroller. That is running at 16 megahertz, which 
uh, is the way that we actually use our four-pronged servo motor. We have the headers for our uh, motor drivers, which if you look, uh, actually run on 12 volts. So they're directly connected to our 12 volt uh, barrel jack. We have some uh, debouncing capacitors, a reset button, as well as LED to make sure everything is set up. Our two large square modules on the outer rim are the setup of our motor drivers. If you can see here is actually our overall design. The image to the left shows a top view of what our PCB, including our logo, the conduit crawler, UNLV's logo. You can see the two motor drivers, how they are actually not integrated into the PCB, but they uh, are wired together within our PCB. Um, then you can see the front view, which actually shows an example of how we would set up our LiDAR connected to the servo motor and how that actually sits on our chassis. That's actually our second module of our uh, L bracket. We have an aluminum version as our final design, but we use that one for testing. This image also shows exactly how our device looks inside a, a conduit pipe. Here we're gonna actually show a video of our project working. This is running through an eight inch diameter pipe, 10 feet long. It's actually going to drive completely autonomously all the way down the pipe. Once it gets to the very end of the pipe, it will actually, not necessarily the very end, but a foot's distance, because we put a blockade at the very end of the pipe, a foot's distance apart, it's gonna stop, and then the servo motor is gonna activate. You'll actually be able to see the servo motor activate, as you can see right now, and then you can actually see the laser of the LiDAR taking its three-dimensional scan and where each one of those planes is being activated. Now that it knows it can't go uh, any further and it's captured that image sent to the inspector, it's actually autonomously driving itself back out because it doesn't want to get stuck in the pipe because it can't go further anymore. It goes all the way to the end of the pipe where then it will actually realize, hey, okay, I need to be picked up by the user. This is what uh, some of our data analysis has done. Our actual final image for our um, conduit crawler isn't in this image. This was actually how we were trying to decide if we were going to, how we were gonna set up the pipe. We actually have some refraction on the outskirts from our LiDAR, but we were trying to set up the dimensions of how large we want our LiDAR to be. This refraction is because we were using, uh, this example was being used with the aluminum pipe as you saw in the original photo earlier back. We were actually setting up our dimensions where you can actually see here where we would set up our full uh, foot distance apart to make sure it stopped and didn't run into anything before it would actually end. This project was a part of the UNLV College of Electrical and Computer Engineering. This was the senior design for